Kia ora, ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Newland Stadium for what will be the absolute game of the round. We have Sacred Heart taking on Wellington East. A rematch of last year's final. Joining me in the commentary box is Millie Mackey. Millie, how are you going? Good, thanks. I'm very excited about this game. It's going to be a very, very exciting game to watch and I'm glad to be here for it. Yeah, look, we're all glad to be here too. Strap in. We've got about 40 seconds before the start of this one. Uh, joining us uh, today on the referee's front, we have Daphne Martinez, Jake Young, who's actually not the youngest ref here, and Amy Jo Clark. Uh, we've got a pretty stacked lineup here for Wellington East as well uh, against Sacred Heart. There's an absolute six team, I believe, or six players, seven player stack here from uh, Baldy Simmies, uh, Wellington East, and Sacred Heart, of course, have their full strength 12 with um, Tia, Rima Weta, and um, Jordana Davy back from New Zealand basketball uh, camps. Don't discount the fact that Wellington East only have six players, they're still going to be out here for a good game. Here we have the starting lineups coming onto the court, and both teams are starting their strongest lineups, which isn't surprising. And it looks like we're in for a good game. Yeah, look, I'm excited for this one. This has been one of those games that are, that have been um, have been in the balance for a while. You know, we've been um, looking forward to getting this one underway um, for for a few weeks now, and it's quite surprising we had this at round two, the uh, the rematch again. This did play places at uh, round two last year, I believe, um, with Wellington East just getting the edge over um, Sacred Heart. But today it's a bit different. It's actually a scheduled match rather than then coming in late to the competition. Yeah, it's always good, and it's always going to be a good game, and it's a game that people always look forward to watching. We have a lot of key players playing in this game. A lot of them actually train together with um, New Zealand Basketball Academy and Kenny McFadden in the morning, so they'll be playing against some of their teammates. There's an early turnover from East, and uh, Tia looks like she got the ball in hand as we get this game underway. taken in by Sacred Heart here. It's taken to the top of the uh, top of the uh, circle there for Jordana Davy. Bit of an offload on that on that right wing. And a good screen set here, and great defensive stop by Henny to, uh, Takawa Thompson, and that will be the first points of Sacred Heart. Uh, great intercept there by Jordana. Easy turnover, and Lala with the uh, layup, and just can't find it, but they'll get the ball back from the. Uh, on the rebound there as the ball's gone um, out of bounds. Jordana is a winner of um, the MVP trophy at under 15 Nats a couple years ago so she's definitely a player to look out for. Good size as well and good all-round ball handling skills. Look, I think this will be quite a physical game here as you can see by the early contact as, as Nina Bolt takes the absolute three from the corner, a, a personal favourite of hers. Yeah, she definitely is a good three-point shooter and it is one of her favourites, so definitely keep an eye out for that during the game. Yeah, we've got quite an audience here as uh, uh, Phoenix Parts here takes a three, can't get that to capitalise. And, uh, no, we've got quite a, quite a big crowd here, I'd say there's almost about 100, 150 people here watching this rematch from the final. Uh, it's quite, quite a big turnout for, you know, for a stadium like this, you know, but it is, again, it's about the basketball and, and that's something that we're, we're very strong here about on the summer series is just, uh, Davey just throws it away, Phoenix to dribble out the ball in the fast break. Yeah, the car park was full coming in, so it's great to see everyone here supporting the girls. It's yeah, that's why you're late to commentary, because you couldn't find a park. Exactly, but it's a good thing though that we have heaps of people here supporting the girls playing today. It's a good game and everyone's wanting to come out and watch it. Yeah, so Sacred Heart here 5-0 up against a bit of a depleted uh, um, Wellington East side. It looks like they're not at full strength uh, as they normally are. Um, one of the uh, body was saying to me earlier in the game, he, he gave me a quick chat. It looks like they've got someone from up north coming down to Wellington East to, to play in the game. I couldn't tell you their name at the moment because I don't have a score sheet. As a foul there, contact, there'll be um, Sacred Heart ball on the baseline. Yeah, it's interesting to see with this East team because... I keep thinking, I keep forgetting how old they are because they've all been playing since they, they've all been playing seniors since they were in year nine because when I was playing my three years of senior basketball, I was playing against the likes of Armory and Phoenix as well. So some very experienced players in the East team. 
Yeah, and that's a good point there. And I'll, I'll probably referee these girls for, for quite a number of years. But, uh, you know, you only really start to connect with them through competitions like the Summer Series. You know, you get involved with what they're, what they're up to and how they're actually progressing in the basketball world compared to what it was as... Um, you know, as it, as it used to be, where I just turn up ref and go home, you know, you're actually connecting with these players as, as Henny Takawa just tries to dribble it in, can't get it quite. Big offload pass to Isabella Tate-Jones, can't finish that one. It's on the ground here, and it's a jump ball, one that will be the first of the game, and position will go to Sacred Heart. Isabella also has a very talented basketball playing brother as well. Basketball runs in the family. He's over on scholarship at high school in America. And Dad also helps coach out the NZ Basketball Academy. And Mum's also a manager as well. So basketball is in the family for that, that Tate family. And Jordana Davey for three up the top. Just can't get it in. Rebound Sacred Heart, however, as Tia has got it on the outside. Looks to shoot. Nina for the shot. Bricks it on that, that, that edge of that backboard and, and it, you know those hoops do need fixing as we talked about last game and splash for Jordana just at the just at the knuckle of the key. You know she can really shoot from out wide and, and that left hand side really is favourable you know being left handed. That's, that's always a bonus. It's always a bonus having a left handed player on the team can, can really take it from that left handed drive and and as Isabella Tate Jones takes it from her left hand side with a right handed layup. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to give them too much space as well, especially Jordana. But with her being left handed and left handed shooter, she has a ability to shoot stronger from the left side than what most players don't because they're right handed. So it's good to see her shooting from that side and she's got the advantage on that. So players are going to have to shut down the space on her. Yeah, that'll be a, a bit of turnover for um, Wellington East. Oh, sorry, for Sacred Heart. And, um, Got a siren on the play, but I'm not sure what for. As, um, as Amari Rossimi takes the ball and, and gives it off to Phoenix. Phoenix is, the, I guess, the prime dribbler of the team. Can really get herself out of some situations as she goes up, gets fouled, and that will be two shots. Yeah, she's a very strong ball carrier as well. I used to play rugby against Phoenix, so she's definitely strong physically, and you can see that when she dribbles the ball. It's got a... It's Peter checks out of the game. And I believe that's um, Deborah Tapusi, but we'll we'll figure it out because we we might need a photo of the score sheet if we could get one. Sorry, folks, we don't have a photo of the score sheet, so we are unsure of some players. We know most of them, but there are a few new people who we are unsure of. Forgive us for that. Yeah, and that's and that's one of the best parts about the summer series. There's always you know new players as as um, as it's, you know get the basket in for the easy one point. Um, you know, new players rotating and getting around as Tia pulls up from, from three land and, and taken by number 14, whose name escapes me currently, but I will find it out. Yeah, it's a great competition here, cause especially with teams like Wellington East and Summers and Sacred Heart, sorry, who have a lot of experienced players. It's a great place for coaches to give the young players some good game time before the season starts. And unfortunately, that layup shot was just missed by Isabella Tate Jones. So Sacred Heart have the ball back and. Ball goes out to Tia at the three-point line, and we have Nina at the three-point line with the black and white coloured socks on today. And a three-point shot, nothing but net from Jordana Davey. Yeah, look, she's shooting really well, and, and it, it, it's not just it's not just inside the hoop; it's, it's outside as well. And, and that's what you need from your bigs. You know, it's always an advantage, as we talked about, to have those players being able to to shoot and stuff from from deep out. As as another layup goes begging. And, um, taken by Deborah Tapusi there, and she'll get the foul as well. And man, Wellington East really uh, are struggling here. It's 10 4 already. Yeah, a bit of a slow start from Wellington East. I'm not sure, maybe it's the fact that they've only got seven players, but they'll need to start switching on and focusing as they're just turning the ball over and fouling a bit too much at the moment. Yeah, look, um, just remember we do have our um, phone lines up in operation. It's uh, 027 Dam Elf, which I'm sure you can work out if you're tech savvy. Um, flick us a text, send us in your comments as Jordana Davies hits another, another three. three. Nothing but net again. She's, like Liam was saying, great size, but also she can shoot, and that's exactly what you want from big players. Nothing better than a big who can shoot as well from the perimeter. Yeah, look, you can't beat it. It's better than the uh, Newlands 2, where we couldn't shoot whether it was under the hoop or, or around the hoop, you know. Yeah, definitely. But players then again, New Newlands 2 was, was quite, a, quite a good team there, you know. I mean, like, we lost to Wangatai 
too. Oh. Another nothing but net shot from Giordana. She is on fire. Look, she, yeah, she's got about, what, 10 points of this already? And so we're not even halfway through the uh, first quarter there. Yeah, she's a great player, and it's great to see her really taking the lead for the Sacred Heart team. She's still only young, still only year 12 at school, I'm pretty sure. Year 12 or year 13, but she's still young, so it's great to see what she can do. She moved from Wainui, is originally from Wainui Amata, but moved to Sacred Heart last year. Yeah, you are right on that front. She, I remember um, she used to be under coach uh, Joe Hemi, actually, um, in um, Wainui, but you know the, the obvious move here was to go to Sacred Heart, who, who are quite a, a strong side, I would say, this year. Definitely competitors with the likes of, um, you know, Heart Valley High losing a few of their key players, Rosie Mafua. Yeah, definitely, and Jordan. But um, just like with these girls' schools, they're not like boys' schools, or they're not all scholarship players. They're just players from the area going to school and playing basketball, so it's great to see how good and competitive they can be. That one's a bit off, but we'll, we'll let her have that one as um, Patia brings it up the court again. And just off to to, um, to Carl Thompson. Who gets her own rebound, but gets found on her way into the hoop. Yeah, another addition to the uh, Sacred Heart lineup today is actually uh, Coach uh, Nixon Panisi, who who was um, playing with Sacred Heart, uh, not Sacred Heart, sorry. Um, Tower last with year? Tower College, my bad, yeah, how could I forget that? And, and you know, he, he really changed some of those boys and, and led them to their first championship. And, you know, this year he's decided to go with Sacred Heart and hopefully to do the exact same thing. Yeah, definitely. Sacred Heart, he, oh, first of all, Nix, he's a great coach, as Liam was saying, coached Tawa last year, and for the first time they were able to win the Premiership Division for college ball and go to Nationals, which was great for them. Great for small schools such as Tower, especially beating big school like Scots in the final. Yeah, speaking of Scots, as um, Alison Lesniak checks into the game for Deborah Tapusi. Uh, look, Scots, they were going to have their first woman team potentially this year. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that, Millie? You know, formerly you'd be supporting the Scots boys team because, well, it's the Scots boys team with uh, Troy McLean there and, and now Kenny McFadden, but... You know, now you're going to be supporting the uh, Scots girls team as well. Yeah, it's going to add a new dynamic to everything, having um, the girls added to the school. But not only that, but Scots now entering girls teams into sporting competitions. But uh, it's hard to say whether they'll actually have enough numbers to put teams in because they've only had an influx of 30 girls to the school this year. So I'm not sure if that will be enough people to cover the sports teams. But with Kit Kenny McFadden there as the new director of basketball, We'll be soon to find out, and I'm sure he'll be pushing hard for a girls' basketball team. Isabella Tate Jones, almost the end one, just gets a gets a little hand slap, a little bit of a high five on the way to the hoop, and 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 that will be. Um, I'm not sure who that is. I think that's Jordana's first foul of the game, and that will take them into the bonus as well. Isabella Tate Jones, you know, she's not too bad from the free throw line compared to last year. You know, she's she's hitting a um, hitting her shots, and I say that too early as she. This is this one. Still a young player, but it's great to see improvement. Summer Series is a great place because that's where we get to see a lot of improvement from the players, especially going into the um, college sports series. Is this is a bit of a pre-season or summer. The reason why it's called the Summer Series is because it's not quite basketball season yet, so it's a good warm-up for the players. At least see them develop going into the college sports season. Yeah, I'd also say it might be because it's actually in summer. Um, that's more the obvious one. Is, uh, Wellington East just can't capitalise off their turn out there um, steal here. Uh, Proctor Kinsey appealing for a bit of a double dribble, but can't seem to get it from the officials. Um, Hartier lines up a three, splashes that in. Maybe an assist from, um, from Isabella Tate Jones, who's actually another one who transferred schools to, um, to you know, further her basketball. She used to go to, um, what, what's that other one? St. Cat. Yeah, St. Catharines, you know, that's one that, you know, could never go on the basketball team. It's Bob McKenzie, she's always on the ground. What are well, that's we, the same what with What are we brother. seeing here? That's the same with her brother. Her brother, I think, went to three high schools to play basketball, trying to find which, what school is best for him, and I think he eventually, eventually found that in St. Pat's Town. Yeah, look, I agree with you. You know, I didn't realise that he... That he'd, change schools because he went to Rongatai for a bit from what I remember and, and Rongatai, Scots and then to St Pat's Town. Yeah and and I don't mind to be 
you know, my personal opinion, I, I'm not too fussed on the whole jumping schools, but, you know, something that we do need to look at at College Sport Wellington is um, kids kind of staying behind to complete another year of um, basketball, you know. Yeah, that is an interesting subject. It happens as well with rugby a lot. People who come back for the year 14 year just, just for the sake of playing basketball, just, um, should that be allowed, you know, like, it takes away opportunities from players who are actually still in high school. Yeah, look, um, you know, but it, it is something that means that there's a problem, which is playing basketball outside of school, and, and this is something I know Basketball New Zealand are, are, are you know, about, you know, trying to look for ways to, you know, bring outsiders playing basketball, and that's something that I think as, as time progresses, we'll, we'll get used to it. It's a bit of a deflection and remain second half ball. Yeah, definitely. It is something that is, it is improving, but it's for playing basketball when you leave school. For those players who aren't able to get scholarships to um, the States, or who for those who don't actually want to go that far and just still want to play competitive basketball outside of school, it is hard for them to find teams and competitions where they are able to do so. Yeah, Caitlin Curtis there, just a bit handsy, and, and it'll be safe for hard ball on the baseline as Lily Lala will take it out. Oh, big contact. Good contact there, and, and we'll get called by official Jack Young, who is not the youngest official here. Isabella Tate Jones is just wondering what happens, and um, I think she's not aware that she completely pushed that girl in the back, but that is fine. Play on. As uh, Tia launches it up, it's just going to be a two. Just a toe on a the line there. Two toes on the line, but still a great shot from Tia. Look, it takes the score up to 17-10. Just nearing the end of the second quarter, uh, first quarter, sorry. Bit of a slow start from Wellington East, but we're only in the first quarter. So it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the game goes. So um, Tears, um, Rimu has got the ball again. Looks to pass, just to the corner there for Rahoui Laulau. To Lesniak. Off to McKenzie. She's been a bit quiet in this game. All ripped out by Caitlin Curtis. Now she's on the fast break. And that's great the, there. Takes the fast break layup. Yeah, look, look, it's it's all about that defensive measures and capitalising on those on those fast break opportunities. You know, if you've got no defence in front of you, you've got to go for it. Yeah, definitely, especially on those turnovers, ball turnover balls. It's very important to capitalise capitalise on that. Well, I've got the ball in the key. Only five seconds to shoot. Kinsey loses the ball again, and that will be a. Maybe a loose ball situation. There's some great hustle there by both those players. Looks like we've got a foul on the play. Just, just one discussion. Uh, officials Amy Joe and Daphne Martinez, and it looks like they're going with the jump ball as um, Isabella Tate Jones has a seat. Um, and East will get that ball back off the jump ball with 48 seconds to go in the first quarter. Yeah, look, we're it's, it's we're we're looking into a into a pretty exciting game here with um, Amari Rosimi just taking a shot. And, can't capitalise it. Those three pointers as well, they're, they're not seeming to be falling. No, East have taken a lot of shots, but unfortunately, that many of them just haven't been able to fall into the hoop, which is something they'll need to improve on going into the second quarter. Tia yeah, spotted a gap. Down and Pati just takes a steal and she'll whip her way down court to um, play number 13. Uh, Katie Curtis for the three. That just bounces off the rim, unfortunately. It is unfortunate because Sacred Heart ball 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 and it's uh, another opportunity lost for Wellington East. Six seconds left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, this, will be the, the ball this will be the final shot. Does it beat it? And it looks and like foul on the shot an one. Jordan. It's an N1 buzzer beater shot for Jordan on the... It's Jordan. You'll find it's Jordana. Jordana. <laughs> so she goes to the line for the last play of the game. What a great shot. Unfortunately, Wellington East will not be happy that they gave away that foul. Yeah, look, um, the uh, shot was made there. Um, I don't know if you, if you saw it on, on screen there, but that's the end of the first quarter, and that will be 20 to 12. In Sacred Heart's favour. Sacred Heart. We'll be right back.
And we're back for the start of the second quarter here with Sacred Heart up 20 to 12. Got an eight point lead. Millie, uh, what's your uh, take on this first quarter? A great start by Sacred Heart and a bit of a slow one for Wellington East. They've been doing some good plays and getting some good ball movement down the court, but unfortunately just haven't been able to finish it off with their shot execution. Yeah, look, um, it's been a lot of attempts at goal, but just not a lot, not a lot have, have actually gone in. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing from Wellington East. They've been doing great, great plays, great getting the ball down the court, but their shots just haven't been able to fall. So hopefully they'll have get some more, some better luck in the second quarter. I'll tell you what it is, Millie. It's pretty hot here. You know, in the stadium, I'd say it, I'd say it'd be about 35 degrees Celsius, just because that sounds like a, a fair estimate. But do you know what? really beats the heat a good skinny fizz that's a, what i think that is absolutely right a good skinny fizz so thank you to skinny fizz for being one of the uh, proud sponsors of the summer series this year um definitely come down grab yourself a skinny fizz you know crack it open with the boys as tia splashes one in just from just outside of the um three-point mark um and come grab one and you know what, what's your favorite flavor what do you normally uh, go for maybe? I definitely am a raspberry person. I always go for the raspberry skinny fizz first. Definitely my personal favourite. Yeah, I'm more into the lemon myself as a Tia, big pass down the court. And, and ta uh, Taylor Kay, she lays that one. Great right layup there by Taylor. Bit of a, bit of a reversal there as um, Caitlin Curtis taking up the ball. And in games like this, and in all games actually, it's very important that they um, sink those easy shots such as the layups or the ones underneath the hoop. And there we see some great passing by Wellington East, but unfortunately they just commit an offensive foul, so Sacred Heart will get the ball back. Yeah, look, um, it, you know, this game is pretty much living up to everything we've expected, but it looks like Sacred Heart will be in absolute control the whole way is as Tia just moves the ball to McKenzie, tries, looks for a drive in. The thing with Sacred Heart is they've got some great perimeter shooters, so if they drive the ball into the key and nothing's on, they have the ability to pass it out wide for a shot, which is something not like many teams have. You know, I'll tell you what, there's always one player on the ground, and that's Brooke McKenzie, every time. You, yeah. if, if someone's on the ground, you can almost guarantee it's going to be her. We love that type of hustle from players, especially from your little nippy guard, so it's great to see her doing that to ensure that her team gets as much possession as possible. Yeah, love the commitment. That's her third foul so she'll be taken off and as, um, as Nina checks in. Not a bad sub to bring off, off, the, on, off the bench that's for sure though. Yeah but three fouls in that first quarter you know you, you need to as much as they've got a big bench you still need to make sure that players are not committing those fouls early. And Definitely and it's not out. ideal for McKenzie to be on that many fouls this early. Tia's got it up again, throws in a, a long one to Taylor Cave. She, she just can't get her hands on it as, as it goes out of bounds and will be Sacred Heart ball. Just like in the previous game with Newlands and Carpety, East just need to hold on to the ball. Position is very important in um, this game, especially because it is so close. So they just need to ensure that they're holding on to the ball and converting on the opportunities when they do so. A turnover there by Sacred Heart and, and Patia brings it up, brings it to Prescott. She'll throw a long one up and, and turn over by Peta Apeniru. She passes off to Tien. She'll, she'll bring it up, set something up. And Nina for the wide open three. Thanks and she sinks it. Nothing but net once again. Just like I was saying with Sacred Heart, they have the ability to shoot from the edge. So if they go into the can, there's nothing on. They have that ability to just pass it out and pass it around the 3.9 to find someone who's open for them to be able to sink the shot. So great passing by Sacred Heart there. And, and they'll go to the line for two. Um, yeah, look, it's, it's bloody hot here. And, and, and that's something that I don't know whether the players are affected by or what. We, we've got the doors open, we've got the fans going, and there just doesn't seem to be anything we can do to, to bring the heat down. The summer series is just too hot. Yeah, this these basketball games just bringing the heat in, especially Hot, just like Jordana's shooting. That's a good one, I like that. But you know, we've got the doors open, and hopefully the breeze is flowing through, but we do have Skinny Fizz down there, so if you are coming down, be sure to help yourself to a can of Skinny Fizz to replenish the heat. Yeah, that's what you want to do, and 
and you know something else you want to do is just go online to skinny oh that's a long one is it I'd call that a turnover rather than a shot. Yeah, there's, um, definitely. There's, um, Thompson takes the ball up and she manages to, to somehow bring both arms just above and around the uh, defenders and, and score that one. Yeah, there was a great play there. And great to see her convert the shot as well. Good to see them finally get some points on the board. Yeah, 27-16 and, and a carry ball by Tia. And that's the first time I've ever seen her do that. Yeah, definitely. Me too. Probably because you don't actually watch basketball that much, Molly. I watch a fair amount of basketball, if I must say so myself. Do you, do you actually? I like to think so. Yeah, look, his um, party brings up the ball and his hands all over it. Official just want to want to make it play on. Um, yeah, and, and we're we're actually crossing to our our um, on on side. Um, we'll go downtown to Dylan DeBrees, who's who's just on court side. Um, we'll cross over to him now. Excellent. How are you all? Good to good to be uh, good to be here. Uh, you know, I'm just cracking open a skinny fizz right now. Um, look, I was very disappointed. I went down to Subway for some lunch earlier on, and they didn't sell skinny fizz. And I, I tell you what, I threw a tantrum and got um, I got kicked out by the manager. Um, but anyway, uh, here's to hoping hopefully they'll invest in some skinny fizz. Um, but anyway, look, the game's looking very excellent. Uh, you know, uh, look, the uh, the team on the the red one is winning by 10 points which is good oh yeah that's Sacred Heart yeah look Sacred Heart are pretty good I think that they'll uh, I reckon they'll take it over East but you know you never know only time will tell Kiora Koto yeah look thanks very much um, Dylan it's always great to have your input on the sideline um, obviously having played probably about negative three basketball games in your entire lifetime as Rodana goes up and looks like it's a shot clock violation before she could get that one off. You know, and these are the kind of things that East need to capitalise, you know, they're, they're down by nine, like it's, they're still in this, just needs to... Yeah, they really need to capitalise on the ball that they have. Absolutely. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if a timeout's called by uh, Coach Voldy here. But, um, it's a long three is taken and just is nowhere near the hoop. Uh, happens but they'll get the ball back as um, a Penedu can't get that ball back into court. Once again Wellington East just aren't able to capitalise on all the hard work they're doing to move the ball around and get the ball into space as they're just m missing their final shot. The ball just isn't going in the basket but there we see a three point attempt by Phoenix Party but unfortunately that was also unsuccessful so Sacred Heart will have the ball back again. As yeah. That rolls it out of bounds. Yeah, checking into the game back, Brooke McKenzie. Remember, she's on three fouls, and Tia is also checking out in, in replacement um, of, of um, someone else that I don't know who they are. But that's fine, as, as um, Taylor Kay is put back into into point guard, and um, great support here from Nina. Is a bit of a bit of a blind pass. They've got ten seconds on the shot clock. What can I make here? Taylor Kay cutting in. On that left flank, Brooke McKenzie trying to drive it in, gets hit, got five seconds left, turnover, and that will be a foul going against Peter Peter. So Wellington East will get the ball back and it's very important that they use this ball and capitalise and get some points on the scoreboard. Hey look, um, just before we continue I just want you to hear the sound and I want you to tell me what you think it is Millie. Can you that tell, sounds what does like that sound like? A good skinny fit. Uh, look, you would be 100% correct. Um, that is that is the classic lemon skinny fizz. Like I said, my personal favourite, you know, if you are down at the stadium, not sure what we've got here, we've got a team control fan today. Um, number 11. That is, oh, yes, I do. It's Hene Takawa. Oh, she abs oh, yeah, I'm watching her on the replay. She absolutely bowled Brooke McKenzie. And like I said, she's always on the floor, you know. It's like, um, it's almost like she slides more than she actually stands up. Yeah, we love to see that hustle from players, though. So it's good to see players like her and McKenzie, especially being on different teams, both of them hustling hard for the ball. As blocked there by um, Isabella Tate Jones, second half will retain position. McKenzie's got the ball again, jabs one way, goes for the fake. and Bit of a shot put up by Good Bro 2 Pussy there, but she can't get it as Taylor Kay slips over. She's not happy about it. Don't forget, you can send your questions in to our number. What is our number, Liam? 
Yes, yeah, sorry, I was just um, talking to our tech team there. Look, um, the number is 027 Dam Elf. Uh, it does appear on the bottom of the screen. Just watch for the tickers. I don't know the actual number it is, but I do know the wording, which is 027 Dam Elf with an N, with an N, uh, Dam Elf. Send your questions in and we will answer them on here. We do like answering. Look, um, I, I just spotted someone with a blue V and, and look, I've, I've ended up swapping that out with a skinny fizz. So, um, yeah, very disappointing from whoever brought that one in. And, and hopefully they'll they'll have a more healthier lifestyle living the skinny fizz way. Yeah, but hopefully they'll learn their lesson for next time and know that we, we don't really accept blue V in here. We're about the skinny fizz life. Zero, very, very low calories, very low sugar. Not taking my blue, I mean, just uh, as my good skinny taste. fizz. Another fouls call, that would be on the a baseline and, and um, look I think we're in the bonus here. Oh, no we're not, we're actually two fouls in. Oh, now, now there's a green V in place. Look, if we want to swap those back, actually, could you put my skinny fizz back? Actually we'll just... There's a big turnover there, but McKenzie just passes to the wrong team, almost forgetting who she's playing for. Isabella Tate-Jones passes a long one over to, over to Amari ross Simmons. She's been a bit quiet today. And see what she can do. Yeah, she? it's getting a bit messy from both teams actually. Late in the late in the second quarter. Yes, Tara Thompson manages to flip like that one off, off the wrist just with the with the left hand and gets the basket to drop. 27-20, leads cut down to seven. Yeah, great seeing Ella using her height. Who? Ella Thompson. Who's Ella Thompson? What's the number? Oh no, that's wait, right, who? Which number? Thirteen. Number 13 for East. I don't actually know who number 13 for East. Look, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. But we probably shouldn't. It's, um, you know, four minutes to go on the um, first quarter here. We see Coach Voldy. Oh, sorry, Voldy. it's the uh, second quarter. Yeah, second quarter, and we see Coach Voldy standing up at the bench, and Phoenix Party walks over to the subby box, waiting to come onto the court. TK brings it up the court. She, you know, another one in the um, NZBA um, camp that goes to America. Yeah, it's great to see a lot of these players here playing together. They train together in the morning with the New Zealand Basketball Academy, and that's with Coach Kenny McFadden. So I'm sure they'll be seeing each other tomorrow morning as well, bright and early, getting those games. Yeah, again for Sacred Heart, just Brooke McKenzie still on those three fouls, is checked out, and Tia Rimueta comes back into the game. As balls going to Deborah Tapus here. Dribbling it up and great defense here from Hines Kara. And she and kind of offloaded to Nina Bot who manages just to flick it in again. You know, it's, it's these little flick passes and flick shots that seem to be doing it. You know, no three pointers, no deep shooting. It's all a, it's all an in in the key game. Yeah, there was some great hustle by Henny Takawa, but unfortunately she just wasn't able to fully snatch that ball off Sacred Heart and they were just able to give a little tip pass and execute the play. Yeah, look, that's another turnover. This is going to absolutely destroy them, the amount of turnovers that they're doing. As Tia gets pushed out of court, but it looks like we're going the other way. Yeah, look, a bit of frustration starting to show on the uh, faces. It looks like they just need a skinny fizz just to, just to calm, the, uh, calm the mood. You know, get their heads back in the game is yes, that's what you know, that's all they need to do. Yeah, definitely. Something then both teams need to try to work on is holding on to the ball, especially East, holding on to the ball and sinking their shots. Yeah, well, there's another foul for Isabella Tate Jones and she didn't look too happy or convinced with that one. And that will be her second foul of the of the game so far as Deborah Tapusi steps up to the line. We're two minutes away from half time and it couldn't come at a better time as players on court are just starting to get a bit frustrated at what's happening what, with some of the calls. Yeah, look, uh, you know, but that's what we expected coming into this one. We expect it to be frustration and, and anger. You know, th these guys haven't played each other since, what, college sport? I think it was the, um, uh, you know, one of the final four games that I actually ended up officiating with Lachey and Jake. As, uh, Pussy makes the uh, second one uh, instead of the first one. Um, you know, and they haven't played each other for a long time um, in the actual basketball scene. So, you know, a classic like this, I'd be expecting to see in, in college sport finals this year. Yeah, emotions always run high in games like this. You know, they're always going to be close, and there's a great rivalry between these two schools. So, it will be about who can contain those nerves and excitement and play the game. Who 
three pointer down there. Looks like Nina, but I, I couldn't tell you because we can't exactly see that much. As um, Ross Simi takes the ball and she she decides to Off set a play. To set, a, part here. set a play as Tate Jones backs in. She's straight down the middle. Bit of contact, but it she got blocked, and that will be East Ball again. She, like she's not happy with that contact. No, she got blocked on the shot and the shot rolled out of bounds off Sacred Heart. So Ace will get the ball back and hopefully they'll be able to capitalise on this ball and get some points on the board. There we go. That's more like it is. M1 for Isabella Tate-Jones and, and she just lays it up. and She'll definitely be a lot happier with that. Tate Jones at the line, about to make her and one three throw. And it just misses, rebounds off the rim and there's a big tussle for the ball between Hini Takawa and Jordana. With East winning the ball back again, so they'll have another opportunity to point points on the board in the last two minutes of the second quarter. Yeah, look, it, it, like I said, this game has absolutely lived up to you know what it has been. And, and East just need to work out a way to really dig in and, and, and get some points on the board, being down by 11. Yeah, it's always a good game to look forward to, but this East team were a bit undermanned this game with only two players on the bench. They just had a bit of a slow start, so hopefully they'll enjoy the halftime break and come back strong in the second half. David with a shot again. A three and gets that one in. Deep three and she sinks that. What a great shot by Jordana Davies. It seems, it seems like she can't miss. Once again, nothing but net. Yeah, well, it's serious shooting practice by some of these girls. You know, they'll spend hours a day just, just taking shots in their own. And, and it really pays off as, as turnover by Patia to hand to Taylor Kay. Pass that off to Jordana. Can't miss. Takes a shot. Lays that one up. Yeah, most of these girls we see watching here are trained in the New Zealand Basketball Academy in the mornings and then also do their own trainings at night with school teams and rep teams as well. So they do put a lot of shots up and get a lot of time in training, but you can definitely see that paying off in this game. Uh, Tate Jones just can't capitalise on that one. It's Taylor Kay again with the, another, um, another rebound. Look, she, she was on fire last game, you know, while those... Um, while Jordana and Maltea were away, she really had to step it up and she ended up being the uh, skinny fizz player of the game. So we'll see what she can do, but for me it's something like Jordana's just shooting up an absolute storm. Yeah, she is, and she's playing well as well. Not just shooting, but also getting some good passes away to her teammates. Sacred Heart is really working well together as a team to move the ball around. And they're all confident within each other for each other to take the deep shot, so it's great to see. Look, we haven't got long, we've got about 24 seconds left in this one, just for half time. Nina just drives it in and unfortunately the shot bounces off the rim, so East will hit the ball with 14 seconds left to go in the second quarter. It's 38-24. Penny Takawa just puts up that shot and it, shot and it rolls out of the rim. And once again, Taylor came bringing the ball up and another three-point attempt by Jordana and unfortunately she just misses that and that brings us to half the summer series for game three of the day. Sacred Heart versus Wellington East with Sacred Heart winning 38-24. Well they haven't won just yet Millie, 38-24 as you said. We'll go into the break, we'll be right back. Thanks for sticking with us, we'll see you shortly.
we're back here for the some series as something seems to be happening as the score takes its toll going to 38 to 24 to Sacred Heart. Millie, what's your recap of this first half? Yeah, it was a great start by Sacred Heart. They had put some good shots up and they've all they've got some great perimeter shooters and players who aren't afraid to take the shot. Whereas East on the other hand were doing great had great ball movement but their shots just weren't falling in the hoop unfortunately. Yeah, look, it's going to be a big second half for Wellington East if they want to get back into this one. 38-24, down by 14, which, which is a pretty big margin compared to last year where they were constantly down by 10. You know, it's a bit more of a ground to make up and with their lack of substitutions as well, it can, it can really hinder their, their chances. Yeah, they've got the players to make the comeback though, so it'll be interesting to see how the second half goes. Is Sacred Heart start off with the ball? like uh, Tia with that layup. Good little layup to begin the quarter. That's it. And then another turn over here from East, but he's on the ground. Diving again. on the ball, passing it up to Hina Takawa. They've got to get this ball over the line. They just managed to do it as, as Tate Jones comes in and can't capitalise on that layup. And a bit of Reda a shimmy up. to get into the key. Phoenix Party driving it into the lane, passing it off to Isabella Tate Jones. A nice two point shot underneath the hoop. Great play there by Wellington East. And the ball is now in the hands of Jordana Davis, who passes, passes it into Nina. Ball now in the hands of Tia. Yeah, look, she's, she's going to try and set a play here because, you know, Sacred Heart are known for their, for their constant play setting and movement, which is something we did talk about in the previous game. That was a key to win. Is, as Jordana Davy drives in and that will be the first foul of the quarter. Yeah, especially with these two teams, East and Sacred Heart, it's great to see them actually setting plays. In the previous game with Newlands and Carpety, we didn't see any plays set. But with this game here, it's great to see them doing that. Jordana makes her first free throw attempt. Second shot to come. Yeah, just remember we are taking your feedback with uh, our, our new phone number, which is 027 Dam Elf. Make sure you're clicking that a text. It does come up on the bottom of your screen occasionally, so check that out and, and, and send us some send us some thoughts, uh, some comments, some stuff you wanna you wanna hear. You know, we're all open to to hearing what you have to say. As Isabella Tate Jones takes a quick drive in, and we'll take the contact and we've got the line for two. Doesn't make the shot good, but gets fouled in the process of doing so. So we'll get two free throws out of that. A couple of important free throws for Wellington East coming up here. It'll be important for Isabella to make these. She makes the first shot. Walks back to the line for the second shot. Your fouls, TK. Unfortunately, misses the second shot and that just bounces off the rim and is rebounded by Jordana from Sacred Heart. And the ball is back in her hands now, down in the half of the court. Ball being passed around with Nina. My bad, that was Taylor Kay making a deep two-point shot attempt just inside the three-point line. Isabella tries to attempt a three and unfortunately that just bounces off the rim with Sacred Heart getting the rebound. But we see great hustle again by Hini Takawa and East have the ball back. Goodness, this is turning into an absolute maniac fest as, as Ross Simi just passes it off and, and, and lays the uh, short ball down to Tate Jones will drive in and, and, and take a cheeky two points. So, look, this is turning into a, into a physical ball and, and I guess that's what we expected it to be. Yeah, definitely what we expected from these two teams. Both are very competitive and have full of great players. So. It's exciting to see them going out there and putting their bodies on the line. You see the ball in the hand of Isabella Tate-Jones. Just misses the shot and that is rebounded by Nina. And she drives it down the court, offloads it to Tia, back to Jordana who makes the shot. Oh, unfortunately she yeah, doesn't make a bit it. Too, a bit too soon there uh, as the ball's loose on the ground and, and Davey manages to... Uh, rebound that one. It was in for all money but just rolled around the, the 10 degree angled hoop. Yeah, Fortunately no, it's a, it's a down at Newland Stadium. The hoops are a bit bent. 
Elizabeth Bent as uh, TK launches a shot. Can't get that one to drop and rebounded by Hine Thompson. As, uh, Phoenix Patia brings the ball back up, straight through the middle, off pass, and, and Curtis just can't get her hands around that one. As, um, and we've got, a, we've got a first check in here for Pike Kennedy. It's, I think it's her debut today in, um, in the Summer Series, which is awesome to see, you know, some, some young players coming back into the, into the competition for teams like Sacred Heart. Yeah, it's great to see Sacred Heart and Coach Nix giving these young players an opportunity here at the Summer Series. Good experience, and it's a good chance for them to get some good game time before they head into the college sport competition. As Davey launches one up, and she's looking pretty good on that, on that three-pointing on that three-pointer line today, but just can't seem to make that one drop. Her arm must get tired shooting all those deep shots, to be honest. Yeah, look, mine, mine got tired not shooting those deep shots, so I think she's probably tired regardless. She's been working hard, he hasn't had much time on the bench so he's been having a lot of on-court minutes. And Tate Jones just loses the ball there and take it hard and get the ball back with Tia taking it down the court. An outside pass and Jordan's shot just bounces off the rim there but is rebounded back by Sacred Heart. Shot there by Tia, long bomb. Just Get bounces off the rim and is rebounded by Phoenix Party who takes it up the court and passes it down to teammate Isabella Tate-Jones who just was, unfortunately misses the shot underneath the hoop. Well, I think the heat's getting to them and, and I'm not talking about the heat of the game, I'm, I'm more talking about the physical heat of the 45 degree stadium. You know, if this was if this was a cricket game, you know, it would be called off for being, being too hot but you know, what can you do is, is um, Davy just can't finish a close in layup. And, and yeah, it is quite hot in here and Unfortunately, we've got all the doors open and all the raftings open, trying to allow the air to flow through, but it's just, it's not doing much to help. Yeah, look, I think the reason they're missing is there's not enough skinny fizz in it. Um, they do need to get a skinny fizz into them, and I think they'll be hydrated, replenished. There's a nice layout there from um, your body. And that looks like a timeout for Coach Voldy. I think that's the first of the game for him. He's, he's not happy with his girls. Down by 16. It's going to be a there's going to be a much bigger bigger um, gap to fill now. It's a much needed rest for Wellington East, though not many subs, so they'll be enjoying the players on the court will be enjoying this little break they get. Yeah, now uh, Millie, we we did bring this uh, discussion earlier to the table, but I just want to get your thoughts on this uh, right now. Is we have been talking today about. Uh, Ice to Animals, uh, the classic uh, biscuit by Arnott's, and we, we put out a bit of a bit of an Instagram poll um, just to see, you know, what the favourite was. And thanks to our sponsors, uh, New World Newlands, for supplying us with just just food for the officials, as they are the official sponsor of the officials. Yeah, definitely. Ice Animals are a personal favourite of mine, a bit of a childhood throwback. Um, I did see the poll there, and I'm definitely a Leo the Lion fan. Yeah, look. I think you're wrong, Millie, because you know, with all the all eight ice animals, or yeah, it's, it is eight. You know, snowy polar bear is just the way to go. I, I believe, you know? uh, and the majority of uh, people on Instagram uh, thought that as well. Snowy polar bear probably tastes so good because it is so rare. Yeah, no, it is. And if you do see a polar bear, I recommend running, as uh, just like Wellington East will have to do to make this margin up, as Isabella Tate Jones will, will bring this one up the court. Keep the game alive. The tip there from Tia, but she manages to um, manages to regain herself. And a bit of an overthrown pass again, and that's another turnover for Wellington East. Yeah, they're just turning over the ball a bit too much. They need to try on holding on to the ball, holding on to the position, and then executing it by getting their final shots in. But unfortunately, they're just not holding on to the ball. Definitely something for them to work on going into this last quarter. Yeah, look, Tate Jones is getting battered there and is not happy about that. She's got a bit of a limp on her as well. And, and probably somebody might have to sub her off. As, um, Thompson brings up the ball and just on the right shot. Um, Amadi Rossini picks it up and a good rebound, and that would be East Ball. Great effort there from, from Henny Takawa Thompson. Yes. Caitlin Curtis manages to check out. Samia, she takes a shot up and can't get that one to drop either. Rebounded by Hinitakawa. Hands all over and the foul's finally called and that will be 
by Kennedy's first foul of the game. Yeah, look, these, I'd say these three throws are pretty important just to make sure that East aren't, you know, missing their opportunities. Yeah, definitely important for East that they convert these free throw opportunities. Gives them a chance to put points on the board without the clock running. But there we just see Henny Takawa just missing her first shot, her first free throw attempt. Hey, um, so I just got some confirmation down that we, we do have some new insider information from um, sideline commentator Dylan DeBrez. Uh, he's down there, he had a quick talk to uh, Coach Voldy of, of the Wellington East team about being down by, by 15. Um, Dylan, down to you, what do you think? Uh, look, you know, um, they are down by, yeah, as you say, well, actually not quite 15 points. It's actually down by, uh, what is it, 16 points. Uh, and I tell you what, like, uh, you know, it is quite a big gap, but, I mean, we've seen, uh, we've seen you know, better comebacks, you know, in some of the earlier games today. We've seen people, you know, pull back by about 15 points in a quarter. So, you know, I think uh, this is a very excellent, uh, excellent match. Very, very interesting. I mean, it's a, you know, very, very... Uh, what would you say? You know, even fight. Uh, but you know, I mean, time can only tell who will uh, who will take the match. Yeah. Look, thanks very much, Dylan. It's it's always useful having your commentary down on the sideline and and talking to uh, some of the coaches. Um, we didn't really get much information out of that, but that's normally expected from any Dylan Jones. Uh, sorry, not Dylan Jones. Dylan Debris commentary as Nina Bot takes the ball up. She's passes it off to Tia. Gives it. Pye Kennedy with the ball, we'll see what she can do. We haven't seen much of her um, yet on a day three. She drives it straight down the middle, passes off to Tia, who manages just to keep it in court. Shot clock's got two seconds left and they need to shoot there. Gets it up and just can't take that one. And Tate Jones is, oh, she, just, oh, she does not look happy. Ball being poured, brought up the court by Henny Takawa and that shot is just outside. We don't see that often. And that's an easy, easy pass off layup. Nina Ball takes that one. Well, that'll be another two points to her name. And, and she's been pretty instrumental in, in, this, in this game here. Yeah, she definitely has been. She's got the ability to shoot from the edge. But what Sacred Heart are doing well is they're just converting the easy points. So making sure they get in all the easy points before anything else. There's uh, another loose shot there. And, and East will regain the ball by a, a nice little job by Thompson. And, and unfortunately, Amity can't take that, neither can, neither can Phoenix, but finally makes a drop. And it looks like Prescott's getting ready to come in. And just a bit of a tip there for Sacred Heart. They've got 15 seconds on the shot clock. What can they do here? Ball's gone wide to Nina. Just can't get it in. Just can't, she just can't make that shot in, in that corner. You know, she was, she was doing quite well in that first game. And then Ross Simi tries to lay up and can't get it. Look, some of those East girls look a bit tired. And it looks like they just do need a skinny face just to get them amped up and, and revved up. As, as Bolt misses that one. East had the ball back. It looks like a three on two. It looks like they practice this too much. And with a push there, she's not happy. We've seen a lot of players on the ground in this game, a lot of hustle from players diving on the ground for the ball. Yeah, look, Daphne Martinez making sure that, that you know, they know what's, they know exactly where the, their place is. is Neiman's not too happy about something on the court. And a bit of contact there, and that will be called by, by official Jake Young, who is not the youngest or, uh, official on the court. Look, we've got some chickens, and I don't think I could get all of them because I probably forget their names half the time. But it looks like... Um, but there's a lot of them happening. Yeah, it looks like uh, Thompson Lala is coming off, and, and, and um, Isabella Tate-Jones. What I said was a bit of a limp earlier, and, and it looks like she's finally decided to have a rest, or coach has decided to put her off, and it comes and gives um, Mackenzie the ball. Davey for three. She'll take a long one. She'll splash that in. Another great shot by Jordana Davy. Look, she's not missing. And, and, and like I said, it's how they're winning. Now they're up by almost 20 points. Yeah, she's got some great height to her, but she's also got the ability to shoot those deep threes from the perimeter. Something that you love from your big players, the ability to shoot from wherever they are on court. Yeah, 
Look, 50 seconds left in this third quarter. Here. Another three point attempt by Jordana, but unfortunately she just misses that one. But I think we'll let that one slide considering how good her other three point attempts have been so far in the game. Yeah, no, she's really done, a, done an awesome job of shooting. As, as, as Carmody just misses another three point attempt. Just, just can't get them in. They've missed most of their three pointers. Unfortunately, the ball just isn't sinking for Wellington East. They're doing all the hard work passing the ball around, but they just haven't got the final execution to get those, the ball in the hoop and the points on the board. About 20 seconds, I'd love to say this is the last play of the game, but it's just not as Prescott manages to float that one. What a great pass that was by number 10 Caitlin. Nice bounce pass down to her teammate. And Sakura had the ball left with six seconds to go in this third quarter. We'll have a shot here. No, a foul's been called by Coach uh, Amy Joe. Ref Amy Joe, sorry. Coach Amy Joe. I don't think she's the coach of the team, Millie. One second. My bad, my bad. Ref Amy Joe, that is. Yeah, that, that sounds a bit better. Look, they've got one second. What can they do here? I, I'd be looking at a Wolves play, but to be honest, I don't know much about basketball. As McKenzie comes in, lays it up, and they're just not going to drop his. And that will be the end of the third quarter. Sacred Heart going into the fourth quarter with the 54 39 lead over Wellington East. Stay tuned, it's going to be a very interesting fourth quarter. And we're back here with Wellington East trailing by 15, 54 to 39, you can see hard. And I thought it would be a bit closer, Millie Mackie. Yeah, so did I, but unfortunately, East have just, just they, they just got off to a slow start in the first quarter, and they only have two subs, so it's hard for them to get, um, it's hard for them to come back from that, but once again, as we can see, players rolling their tops off. It is very hot down there in the Newland Stadium, so players will be Looking forward to this game ending so that they can get some nice cool air. And also so they can grab a skinny fizz out of the uh, fridge. Make sure you're, you're, you're getting your skinny fizz um, absolutely free down at the um, down on the court. So you don't want to miss out, put it that way, you know, because it does go pretty quickly. We, we ran out last week and we didn't want to do that again. Yeah, if you are coming oh, down. Big block there from, from Allison. Great block, but if you are coming down to the Newlands College Stadium, definitely help yourself to a can of skinny fizz. Yeah, you won't go wrong with your mini -maker. It'll definitely quench the thirst. I definitely will, I definitely will as, as a nice shot there from Caitlin Curtis. So brings, it, brings the score back a bit, a bit, but will it be enough in this fourth quarter? Yes, they could have a nice lead on Wellington East, but still, Wellington East do have the players in their team to allow the... Um, to give themselves the opportunity for a comeback. Oh, it's got physical and it looks like an offensive foul has been called here. Oh. Yeah. Definitely Martinez with Ace getting the ball back from that. Yeah, look, a bit of, bit of elbow usage. It's 
not the best thing to do, but that will be a fourth of, of the game as, as we remember she got that early third foul back in back in the second quarter. Hinitakawa drives the ball into the lane and unfortunately just loses that ball between two players. Yeah, look, um, I think Sacred Heart just just need to keep doing it. You, know? you, you can't beat it, can you? No, they're doing a great job executing their plays and finding the hoop. They have a great ability within their team where they've all got some confident shooters and they're all willing to take those deep shots so they're not necessarily having to always struggle their way into the key to find the shots. If it's not on, they'll just pass it out and shoot the shoot from the perimeter. As well, that shot went down as um, a less flustered um, Isabella Tate Jones comes out. You know, she was she was feisty in that in that last quarter. She was not happy with, with the way that the team was playing and as she passes it out to to um, Prescott and she can mm -hmm. realize and back to Tia who will take the ball up and a bit of a bad pass there and Prescott will take that one. Yeah, you can tell with games like these, players get quite fueled up, um, especially when they're playing against their friends as well, you know, you always want to come out on the upper hand and have that like I was saying, upper hand against your mates, but you've also hey, got to try and go. remain cool up, in the situation. It's good to see Tate Jones out there though, having a lot more fun. Not, not looking as flustered as what she was at the end of that third quarter. And Nina just drove that ball into the hoop and unfortunately didn't make the shot and it's rebounded by Wellington East. Ball in the hands of Tate Jones. Another big turnover. East just haven't been able to convert on the ball that they've had, unfortunately, and that's why they're currently trailing. Okay, look, they've, they've brought the lead back a bit, but, you know, um, Sacred Heart just, just keep chipping away at that, at that score, you know, increasing it to 60, 65, 68 plus. Yeah, Sacred Heart are doing a really good job at making sure they get those easy buckets. They're making sure they get the easy points before, not just, not trying to do too much fancy things, but always just getting those easy shots under the baskets. As Davy drives up, that one's a floater, but she can't actually uh, get it in the hoop. But she manages to keep it in, and unfortunately her teammate just misses the three-point opportunity. Ace have the ball back. They really need to capitalise on the ball they have. And Hinitakawa gets fouled in the process. Yeah, we've got some, got some subs coming in. It looks like Taylor, Taylor Kay, Kay coming in and Petter off for Allison and, and uh, Brooke McKenzie there. So a bit more experience back in the, uh, in the five on court. He needs to cover back at the line. Nothing but oh, net on that first free throw from Hini Takawa. It's really important that the East capitalise on these free throw opportunities that they get. Yeah, look, um, we're, we're, we're actually going to go down to Dylan uh, Debris again. Our so sideline commentator. Yeah, look, he's, um, it looks like he's got a, actually a weather report, an internal weather report, which, which is the first time I believe this has probably ever been done in a basketball game. Dylan, down to you, mate. Uh, look, well, um, i tell you what, it's very hot. Uh, there's a forecast for more hotness coming, uh, as well as some uh, beautiful fluoro lighting. Uh, very excellent, you know, consistent light throughout the, uh, the indoor uh, stadium here. Uh, I mean, look, what else have we got? We've got, you know, uh, yeah, we've just got, it's just hot. You know, it's just bloody hot. I'm sweating like an absolute pig. Um, yeah, look, back to you, Lou. But if you do come down here and you are feeling hot, do help yourself to a can of skinny fizz. Hey, look, uh, Dylan, if you, if, if, are you still there, mate? I, I am still here. Yeah, hey, look, um, I've just got one quick question for you. I was just going to see, um, uh, what's the light reading looking like? Uh, you were talking about the fluorescent light, and I just wanted to see as, as, uh, as uh, yeah, just, just floats that one up off the backboard. Uh, I'm sure you saw that, but just what is the light reader saying? Because I know you've got a, a light meter reader down there. Look, the, uh, the, the light meter is saying uh, it's pretty light in here. Uh, it look, the, the light meter says, wow, there is a lot of light. Yeah, I mean, it looks like there's like plenty, oh, maybe like 50, 50 bloody uh, fluorescent lights in here. Um, of course, it's not going to cause any eye strain, eye pain or inflammation uh, as a common side effects of uh, fluorescent lighting. But I tell you what, uh, you know, uh, it's very light. Yeah, sorry, uh, just one more thing. Um, uh, we know the meter meter very well as um, Partia 
Chick Sun. Um, on the meter meter, you know, from a scale of not mean to pretty mean, um, what would you rate this lighting? Mate, it's it's bloody mean. It's chur mean. That's how mean it is down here. It's mean. That is quite high on the meter meter. Thank you very much for that. Again, very insightful uh, uh, sideline commentary, uh, Dylan DeVries. We're going to add some te reo Māori into this and we're going to have a kupu hou o te rā, which means word of the day. And our word of the day today is pahi ki te poro, which means basketball. Well, I'll be honest with you, Millie. I'm not the, uh, as a freeze shot there by Pati Alec, I'm not the most fluent Māori te reo speaker. But what I will ask is, why did that sound like multiple words um, and not just one word? The word paikite poro, paikite means basket, poro meaning ball, put them together, basket, yeah, so, ball. So that sounded like two words to me. It's one word. Alright, I trust your judgement on that. Uh, we'll get back to the game here as uh, Sacred Heart, bring it back up. It looks like Taylor Kay's got the ball and she tries to drive into a spot, gets hit quite desperately and ball's loose again. Phoenix Party diving on the ground for that ball. That, we've seen some great commitment by these players getting on the ground to get the ball back and Caitlin there just finishes that shot off. Great turnover by Phoenix. It's good for them to finally get some points on the board. Yeah, it looks like back by 11. So it looks like um, Sacred Heart are actually uh, taking the lead. Uh, not as serious as they should as they're shooting from distance and can't seem to get it in. And we've got Tate Jones and smashes that down. Let's take the lead to nine. Great two-point shot there by Isabella Jones. Tate Jones, sorry. It's good to see them finally converting on some of the balls that they have and some of the turnovers that they're making. Sacred Heart on 60. Nine points in it. Four minutes to go in this last quarter of the game. Yeah, look. Another block there by Patia, and that will, that will take it to about two in the game. And as a sub comes on, it looks like uh, Bolt's coming off for Mackenzie, who's, who is on her fourth foul, so we do need to be a bit careful here as, as any sudden movement or any sudden foul will, will see her sit out for the rest of the game. East have the ball back. Oh, wasn't the best pass there. East will have the ball back as it was just sipped out of court by Sacred Heart and we'll have Phoenix Party bringing it up the court. We've got about four minutes left in the game. What can East actually do to increase their, their um, sorry, shorten the gap? It looks like, um, Great flow to by Hina Takawa. Yeah, it looks like Thompson can just get it in by driving in and, and Sacred Heart need to have a good look at their defences. Now the lead's down to seven. And looks like the comeback is on, as, as quoted by um, Dylan, Dylan DeBrez down a few... Uh, a few plays ago. This comeback though is nothing less than we expected from this Wellington East team. Great layout there by Phoenix Party of bringing the gap down to only five points. Sacred Heart just letting go of that generous lead that they had. Hey look, I can. the crowd are really starting to get involved in this one. As the lead's down to five points now. Sacred Heart hadn't scored in about two minutes. Long shot by Teo, splashes in. That is a clutch play right there. That helps bring that lead just a little bit further up out of East Reach. Yeah, that was a great shot by Tia, especially in the crucial moment of this game. Three minutes left. East down by seven. Yeah, we, haven't, we haven't received many texts today on um, 027 Dam Elf. And we'd love to see some more. So please do send in your, in your feedback before we finish this. And a bit of forward movement in from, from Davey. And, and here we go. And that's a shot clock. That is a big turnover there from, from Wellington East. Unfortunately, the shot clock runs out and East just weren't able to capitalise on that final shot. But we have a timeout call to Sacred Heart with 2 minutes 46 seconds left to go in this final quarter of this game. Look, I'm pumped for this one, Millie. Uh, gosh, I'm, I'm almost stuck for words. Not because of my commentating abilities, but more because it's such a such an epic game that we're having here, and, the, and this is exactly what we wanted to see. You know, it's hot, we're under pressure, everything's going down here at the Summer Series. Make sure you definitely come down before before the end of the competition. Yeah, nothing less than what we expected to see, but it's great to see East making a comeback in this game. Sacred Heart had a generous lead, but unfortunately just let that slide a little bit and East putting a lot of pressure on in this last quarter. It would have been great to see them play like this earlier on but let's see how they go. 
Hey, look, I wonder what Coach Nixon's saying. We might have to cross to Dylan De, um, DeBrez shortly, but I don't know if he's actually down there anymore. I think he's actually gone home. I Mainly think, is, that, is that him over at the Skinny Fizz box? Getting him himself a new yeah, can of Skinny Fizz? Yeah, looks like fizz? he's got about three in hand. So, um, geez, I, I, no wonder we're running out of Skinny Fizz. So better get down quick and, and get yourself a, a, a nice, refreshed can of Skinny Fizz, which reminds me, we should probably put out another load because we're very close to, to running out again. All right, we have the players walking back on court for the last two minutes, two and a bit minutes of this game. It's going to be interesting with Sacred Heart only, only have the lead up by seven points, which is only four shots needed by Ace to take the lead. Yeah, look, you're absolutely right. Um, I'll be honest with you, I didn't hear a word you just said, but I 100% agree, Millie Mackey, as the ball, the ball does come up by Sacred Heart once again. Passing it around, playing the playing the passing game, which is great. Just just getting some time going as ball seems to be tipped out and will be second half ball. Wellington East will need to dig up hard here and hope and hope that um, Sacred Heart don't make any baskets. And that was a great rebound attempt by Wellington East, but the ball just fell back in the hands of Sacred Heart, unfortunately. But Phoenix Party makes a break with the ball heading into the lane. Looking for her teammates and finds Caitlin, who goes in and unfortunately just misses that shot. Coach Voldy on the sideline isn't happy there. Look, that, that lead's still seven. It hasn't changed for a while. Just, just taking the time. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Big, deep shot there for, for Bolden. She can't get it. Goes. Lau Lau gets the, gets the rebound. A very important re rebound there by Lau Lau. Takes it up and tears again. She loves that fend, just a, just a bit of a right off arm. As Bolt smashes in a three, that's, that's a, a very, timeout. Very timeout crucial well three. East. Very crucial three point by Nina Bolt there. Well, Wellington East are going to go in the chat to that. That is outstanding effort. What a shot. What a shot and a crucial part of the game. Sacred Heart now up 10 with just over, just under two minutes to play. Yeah, look, look, this has been absolutely everything we have hoped for and, and, and I'm extremely excited to see exactly what's going to happen this next two minutes or so. You know, East need to come out blazing, they need to play their full court presses, they need to, they need to really do other basketball stuff that will help them win because I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure what that contains. It's going to be very exciting to stay, say the least. One forty nine need to go in the last sixty five fifty five. Wellington East just trailing behind Sacred Heart and this this is almost an exact replica of the uh, the grand final last year where they were down by ten trailing just the whole last quarter and that's that's pretty much what we've seen. Yeah, it's going to be hard to pick an MVP of this game because there's been a few players who've really stood up in crucial moments. Yeah, look, who's going down your um who's going down your route now? Um, at the moment, I've got Nina and Jordana on the top of my list. But well, well, how about you? Well, you can only have one player. I'm going to have to go with Nina. I like that option. But remember, we did have some big threes in that in that first quarter. We have from and Jordana. From Jordana, who was really brought the ball up as Coach Baldy advanced the ball here. But we'll see how this last two minute pans out. Panhead. Wait, that's a beer. We, we're, we're not talking about beer, we're talking about skinny fizz. As the ball's kept alive for Wellington East. Oh, it's got it. Punches out to Patia, throws up a three. Unfortunately, that just rolls off the rim, but East get the rebound, and Caitlin goes up for the shot and gets fouled doing so. So we'll get an opportunity to shoot two from the line. These two points are going to be very crucial for Wellington East. Look, it's very physical in that paint, and I'm sure you'd agree with me that it's just... It's, it's almost it's almost brutal, you know, in there, and and, and that's what you you want to see it, but you want to see it in a in a positive way, not in in a, in a negative way, as as Curtis manages to sink the first. Yeah, we've seen some great physicality from both sides, but we just hope that it doesn't get too physical in a non-sportsmanlike type of way. But so far they've been pretty good. So let's see how this last minute and a half goes. Caitlin makes her second shot. 
Very important two points here for Wellington East, and they need to D up hard for this last minute and a half of the game. Down by eight. eight. And it looks like our, our batch of skinny has actually just arrived as a East turn that ball over. Oh, that's a that is a that is a lemon and it's outstanding. That is the sound of a great can of lemon skinny fizz. We've had another turnover by Wellington East and, and Sacred Heart just need to hold it here, but you know, play that play the clock. They've got 14 seconds to play with. Take the take it down to the minute. And, and just pass it around to Hedo who drives in. And Bolt and just gets fouled there. And Misses the shot but gets fouled while doing so, so we'll get an opportunity to go to the line with yeah. a minute remaining in this final quarter of this game. Yeah, look. Uh, so you can tell the disappointment from some of those East players, but what they need to do is really just stick with it for the next 12 or so minutes, you know. They've, not 12 minutes, sorry, I was looking at the score. <laughs> next, um, you know, they've got eight points down, minute seven to go. Nina misses her second free throw, and that's rebounded by Caitlin, and she gets fouled. So East will get the ball from the baseline. I think they might be shooting two here, uh, Millie. Oh, yes, they will, actually. Bonus free throws. So I'll walk down the court to the free throw line when Caitlin Curtis will get the opportunity to sink another two free throws. You know what else she should probably sink? Do I hear a can of skinny fizz that, coming on? That is exactly what I was thinking. Make sure, she, you know, after the game, she gets a nice refreshing skinny fizz. Thanks to uh, Skinny Fizz, of course, for sponsoring uh, the Triple Threat Summer Series this year. And shout out to Newlands New World, who are the official sponsors of the officials. Oh, I love hearing that. I just, just, for some reason, just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? You know, because when I think referees, the first thing I think of is New World Newlands. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. New World Newlands providing them the fuel they need to keep going throughout the day. You know, it's a long day down here at the Summer Series, going from 12 all the way to our latest game at 7.30, which can end as late as 9 o'clock. So it's very good to have that food from New World Newlands down here, keeping the officials energised throughout the entire day. Yeah, look, um, I'm just about to, I'm going to start a, oh, here we go. Oh, no, there wasn't a fight. I thought there was. It's going to get interesting, and, and, it, and it looks like it will be um, Sacred Hearts ball with a minute three to go. I feel like it's been a minute to go for the past four minutes, but... It has been a long time, but it is the last two minutes in basketball. But as my dad says, it takes about half an hour. And it looks like East ball. What have we got? It is Wellington East ball. A bit of a turnover there, and, and look, they'll get the ball back, and like I said, down by much hot up. We've got another skinny fizz. That's awesome. And that looks like that will be East's last time out. As Coach Boldy will want to want to draw up a play here and really sort it out with the girls. 59 seconds left in the game. East are only down by eight points. So it'll be interesting to see what they do coming out of this timeout. Yeah, look, uh, that will be East's last time out. So that's really crucial in, in this part of the game. Is, is, you know, being the last time out, you can't advance that ball anymore. That is a great shot. Yeah, big shout out to our media team as well. They've been keeping you updated on SummerSeries.nz as well as our Instagram and Facebook. Fantastic team, and also our tech team have been doing an absolutely wonderful job at bringing you these live stream and broadcasts. And, and, and look, you can't you can't have the Summer Series without a bit of technology. And, and look, they've just done a great job, and I'm really really proud of the team actually. You know because we did start the summer series with the idea of just being a better and bigger league for the school teams that may not get this opportunity and, and, and now they're getting probably what I would almost describe as the opportunity of a lifetime to you know, play basketball, get their stats, learn from it and, and doing it at a young age as well, That's that for me is pretty important. Yeah, it's really expanded well this competition in the past three years it's been running so it's great, it's, it's really great to see how far it's gone. You know what else is great? Skinny fizz. Sorry, I bet you to it. Anyway, a minute left to go. Patia brings up the ball and she'll look for a long three and that looked good, but TK just manages to get that rebound. And eight, um, Sacred Heart will try and slow it down here. Uh, Nina just, just holding that ball, keeping it safe, you know, treating it like a, a newborn child. Yeah, yeah but oh. not, not Davey, he tries a long pass and Armady gets oh. fouled and they'll be heading back down to the line for two points, for two free throws. Yeah, look, Bolt's not happy with that one, and you know she's she's having a good a good word to referee Daphne Martinez, and, and you know this officiating crew has, has quite a lot of experience with, of course, Amy Jo Clark and uh, you know 
with uh, National League and Jake Young, who is not the youngest official in the, in the squad. Um, you know, there's a lot of experience, and and that's the big thing. And I'm sure, you know, they just come to the summer series and they 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 just look at it and go, "This is me." As Amadi takes her second shot, makes that one. This will take the Levy down to down to six. I believe that is seven. Yeah, look, you give the dyslexic guy the opportunity to, to do something and he'll definitely get it wrong, especially with numbers. Pinadu takes it up, offloads that ball to Nino, just gets fouled and it looks like they're at the, uh, they're looking to go for the bonus now. They've got a bit of a way to go. There's, there's um, Upper Hutt College just in the corner there. They really want to get involved, don't they? They almost want to jump on the court. Watch this. So that that game's done, they'll be they'll be straight on that court warming up. With, of course, Coach Sam Toby. Hey, I'm riffing that game next. This is going to be a disaster. Interesting to see that Coach Nix is coaching Sacred Heart, considering his daughters have all gone to and are still at St Mary's. Yeah, no, you uh, big up to them. They're, you know, they always they're always supporting. You know, whatever he wants to do in terms of coaching and and with the decisions they make. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's great to have kind of that family orientation around them. And, you know, that's one of, that's something that the Summer Series is definitely about. Yeah, it's definitely a great community event and great for the family could, to come down to and support and watch on your Sunday afternoon. And that ball just bounces off the referee. Oh, and they go for the Brings court. us to full time here hey. at the Summer Series. That sounds like it's 65-58. That is the final score here at Newland Stadium. Sacred Heart take a very, very tough win over Wellington East. From myself... Mackie and everyone here at the Summer Series, thank you so much for joining in and we'll see you all 